Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Today, our good friend, John Bevan, hi to John and hi to Jackie as well, uh, he has sent us this rather interesting and uh, vintage, you could say, frog kit. It's the Spitfire Mark 14, so it's a Griffin engine Spitfire, isn't it? Uh, with the flying bomb, V1 flying bomb. Now this is something really interesting which I don't think I've seen before. Or have I? I can't remember if this isn't one I've actually had. I've got, maybe it was a Mark, I think it was a Mark 9 Spitfire. I did have a, a Frog Spitfire at some point. But this one, his loaners, he really looks really nice. And again it's got this advert for sky base stands on the side which is really quite nice. Very similar to the Matchbox concept indeed. Although I don't think Matchbox are ever encouraging you to put it on the wall like they're doing here. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that youngsters sticking them on the wall was a very good idea. Not very conducive to the health of your kit, I think. Especially when you were that sort of age, you know, in the sort of 70s. Um, date on this, again I've made the mistake of not checking it. Hannant's 55p, that does date it. Mid 70s, mid late 70s, I'm thinking 78, probably that. But the actual manufacturer of the kit, I think, goes back to, yeah, it's even got the Rovex uh, label on it. So this is probably very early 70s, 72, 73, something like that. Uh, I'm sure you can check out the scale mates, but look on the back, we've got two the Punjab Royal Air Force Squadron, obviously some Indian pilots. I think there's a bit of fun being had by them here, could be called the Punjab Squadron. Looks very nice. And then you've got the alternative of um, the South East Asia, Royal Air Force South East Asia Squadron in Hong Kong in 1945. Now there's lots of Spitfires in Hong Kong in 1945. They also had the Mark 24s um, coming out. And then you've got the V1 at the bottom, which doesn't say anything about it at all. Rovex was a, was a subsidiary of Triang, British British company. And of course, FROG, for those of you that don't know, stands for Flies Right Off The Ground. Which sounds a bit weird, but you have to bear in mind that FROG also produced all sorts of uh, like chuck gliders and radio control type. I'm sure they were radio control, but they were planes you could fly, you know, gliders and uh, slope soars and things like that. Um, British company, so we should celebrate that. So let's have a look. Looks, looks going to be an interesting one, I think, again here. And again we've got, in fact we've got the same advert, strangely, that we had on the other kit from uh, uh, Chris Doney, I think it was, that sent us his Mirage. So, oh it's bagged. Ooh, oh, it's bagged, it's bagged, this is crisis time. Plastic bags can be dangerous. Well it's bagged but it's stapled, so I think we can just take the staple out. I'm not going to cut it open, that'll be sacrilege. One staple, I think we'll be alright. We've got our sky base, look at this. The stand, which they call sky base. How about that? That is cool, isn't it? They're really rather nice, aren't they? The plastic quality seems a bit different to the other one. It's the same design. It doesn't seem to be... It seems like a pearlescent look to it. How curious. But they're nice, aren't they? Same, same idea as a matchbox. You've got a ball here and a cup here, which means that it's multiposable. Very, very nice. Um, plastic bags can be dangerous. My goodness, yes, we know that. Right, I'm going to take this staple out. I don't think that John will mind me doing that, because it means I don't damage the bag. There we go, staples out. I think we're in business. Yes, we're completely in business here. So we'll take that out of the bag. And then we'll have a look at these decals, which are over here. Which I have to say look awfully like the style of the Matchbox one, actually. Spitfire Mark 14, a flying bomb. And it's got the ampersand and separately, can you see that? How bizarre! That's odd. I think the idea is it goes... I know what they've done. It's so you can put it in the middle of the stand on this bit here. I think. Put the and there, and the sand. How interesting. <laughs> anyway, uh, to be honest, for mid-70s uh, decals, they, they look pretty decent. I, you know, you've got... I think they just use the better quality of backing paper than Matchbox. Matchbox has one Achilles heel, the backing paper on the deck, can't it? Always goes yellowy, brown and nasty. Anyway, let's have a look at what we got. Instructions, first of all. 
We have the last one again. We've got exactly the same setup as we saw on Chris Downey's Mirage. The same graphics. Shows the stand, shows the hot tips and hints. Does it very well though. Even better than Matchbox if that's possible. Uh, there seems to be less of this in terms of it's not quite as big an instruction book as that one was. So let's get right into it. Oh, it's fairly simple, I think. Okay, whoops. Let's have a look. Um, just, I'm just checking again for a date. No, there's no date. Yeah, I'm guessing it's 73, 74 ish. Anyway, here we go. V1 Flying Bomb first, and it comes in just four parts, would you believe? So that's very straightforward to assemble. Just put it on your um, pulse jet motor, rocket motor. Then you're building up your little cockpit with the pilot. Uh, he doesn't really have a seat as such, does he? <laughs> it's a bit weird. He's just sitting directly on the floor uh, with the bulkhead behind him. <laughs> and you've got your fly five blade of prop. And then we have our undercarriage uh, legs and we've got our tyres and wheels. Uh, the cannons are already, I don't like that, the cannons are actually moulded into the wing. I'm not sure that's a good idea. They could get broken easily. But you've got a very conventional sort of setup for the wing. A one piece under wing, and just like Matchbox, and a two piece top wing. Putting that in. Then you bring in your pilot cockpit into the fuselage halves, plus your five bladed prop. And then, oh, you have options here. You do you actually get an option of yes, you get an option of do you though? That's odd. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to work out here is this um cockpit canopy, whether it's actually two separate pieces, whether you have to split it. It is in fact, I'm glad to report two separate pieces. So you've got the option of one piece closed or open with its slid back, two separate pieces. You put it in your tail planes there, then you've got your cannon armed, Hispano cannon armed um, wings going on there. Then you're putting in your radiators and your gear. And then finally, you've just got um, the option of obviously having the wheels up. Wheels down or wheels up, the choice is yours. You've got your little pito head under the wing, tail wheel, and then You've got, you've got, have you got a second, oh yeah I see, it's got a secondary stand, ah, now then, it has two stands in effect, or a, or a giant stand in which you can have them chasing each other, so in a way the, the, the blue stand I've shown you is kind of superfluous, the standard one, how interesting, it's quite, it's quite amusing the way that they've depicted this, isn't it, can you see that? It's like it's sloping down with the V1 being chased by the Spitfire. Very good. I like it. Right, okay, that's good. I enjoyed that. That was quite interesting. They've actually thought it through, haven't they? So, you're probably not going to use that blue standing truth, otherwise you wouldn't be able to uh, easily mount the V1 flying bomb. So, let's have a look at these sprues. And here is the V1 flying bomb. Wow. Okay. There's not much detail. Then there isn't a lot of detail on the real aircraft, of course. It has no ailerons, it only has <coughs> a rudder and an elevator. Quite a bit of flash on the back of the stand here. But, yeah, it's not too bad, in fairness. Easy to get off. Quite a substantial stand, that, isn't it? That's quite good. Okay. Then we've got our... Yeah, fairly rudimentary detail on the wing, the lower wing. Uh, looks very matchbox like that, actually. And then we've got... It's a very sort of wibbly-wobbly uh, sprue, must be careful with it. Then we've got our um, pulse jet mo rocket motor here, for the V1. Um, we've got a pilot, who is rather... Uh, rudimentary. Looks like he's melted a little bit to me. And you've got this very strange setup where he's not sitting in a proper seat as such. Um, it's raised panel lines on the fuselage, as you can see. The engine exhausts are all moulded in as one. But it has got some nice rivet detail. I don't know if you can pick that up in the camera. You see that? Rivets are quite nice, aren't they? 
Yeah, quite like that. Yes, very good. That's quite nice. On the other side, whoops, well that's just part of company. Was that already off or not? Not sure whether that was already off, but we've I mean, got the wing as part of company, I'm afraid, with the rest of the sprue. I think it was just sitting there, I think it was detached already. Honest governor, it was detached, it wasn't me, I didn't do it. <laughs> don't want to get into trouble. Um, yeah, they've done this quite nicely actually, haven't they? You see they've got the flaps and the ailerons there separately. And then you've got your Hispano cannons, which actually look a little bit out of scale, seem a bit too chunky to me for this scale. I think they might be a bit too long as well. So they're not quite right, but we don't be too churlish about it. Here's the rest of the sprue, this just seems to depart itself from. Uh, with the other wing, and then you've got your other side of your fuselage. I'm not sure if they've got that, have they got that rudder tail right? I'm not sure the shape is absolutely spot on. I know it has that sort of look to it, but I think, I think in reality that it should be a little bit more pointed at the top and then not quite as deep this way. I think they've, they've not quite got the shaping absolutely spot on there, to be honest. Again though, we've got this um, nice riveting detail on the engine cowling panels. And then you've got your gear legs and you've got some horrendous flash. It's really come out over the top, hasn't it? Uh, if you want the retracted gear uh, and doors, that's very obvious. And then, of course, we have our radiator covers there. And then last but not least, well, not quite last, because it's got clear as well. But this is this, um, I quite like this concept. This is where you've got the, the V1 goes here and the Spitfire goes here, up high. And it mounts into that stand. I think they've done that really well. And they've also got quite a nice five blade prop there. That looks pretty cool doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, I think I quite like that. Mm. And you've got various tail wheels and gear legs etc there. Again a little bit of flash gone a bit berserk here in the corner. <laughs> but it's quite nice. I mean it's yeah the flash has gone out a little bit. It's just um I think that's just a mould housekeeping issue in terms of they haven't cleaned it enough. Uh, and it's just a little bit of a gap has developed, a fractional gap in the moulding. Uh, and then there's the other side of your V1 flying bomb. So overall, yeah, that's uh, I like that stand design, I think that's quite clever. Uh, this is what we're lacking, I know I, I know I I know I bang on about stands and dioramas, but it just shows a bit of a lack of imagination, innovation, you know. Everything today is about artwork and about panel detail and it's as though the manufacturers are blinking and they can't see beyond just those things which I find a bit frustrating. Finally, and it's not the best clear parts I've ever seen, well there's a point here I think, <laughs> that, this and the flash. We have got the cockpit canopy, uh, see all the flashy bits on it, but it's not terribly clear. That's all, it's very, you know, like a, almost like a resin attempt at doing clear parts really. A bit misty and a bit nasty really. I've seen, yeah, it's, a, it's not, the, not a good clear parts really. This. Not terribly impressed, if I'm frank. And then there's the, uh, the other windscreen is here. Which hopefully we get a focus on, yeah. And again, lots of flaws in it and See if I can try and get you to see that. Can you see this? It's a bit nasty, to be honest. <sighs> that lets it down quite a lot, I'm afraid. So, where are we? I think the kit's uh, concept is really excellent. Nice instructions. Love that stand concept. Five-bladed props done quite well. But some of the execution's a bit flawed, isn't it? It's very flashy. Not the end of the world. I mean, the flash is all... It's not everywhere, which is the main thing. Um, one or two things like these cannons don't quite look right to me. They're much too big, out of scale. Um, but overall, I think a really nice kit. I think it would look great in this diorama with the, the V1 trying to escape from the Spitfire diving down on that stand. I like that concept very much. I think I'm going to give it... What are we going to say for this? Hmm, it's a tricky one, isn't it? 
think it's going to be eight and a half out of ten. I think that's fair. It does lose a couple of points because those the canopy clear parts is. I've got to be frank and say it's a bit nasty. They haven't even got the. Uh, We've got this big huge hole in it as well where the mirror's going to go. It's all out of scale, a bit silly or anything. <laughs> Clear parts are a bit of a fail and the flash lets it down. So I think knocking one and a half points off is fair. Other than that, great packaging, love the box, love the stand. Nice details on things like the riveting. Nice kit to be honest, nice kit. Eight and a half out of ten, that's where I'm at. That is my final word on the subject. I hope that you that will give me ten out of ten. And don't forget, if you're not a subscriber on the channel already, to subscribe. And if you are, smash that like button and show your support. Uh, and if you're a regular watcher, just, just double check that you've got the uh, notification button pressed in. Because some of them have been reset recently by our friends at YouTube, I think. Anyway, I hope you found some of these recent uh, nostalgic kits of interest. I certainly did. I like that one. Um, bit of work, just a little bit of work needed on it and it could be a really nice little diorama and for something that would have cost probably well under a pound when it came out you're almost getting two aircraft for the price of one really I like it and I think it's uh, an interesting subject so thank you very much to John Bevin hi to John and hi to Jackie thank you ever so much for loading those two as I will rebag it up for you nicely and we'll get that back to you in the very near future indeed anyway until we have some more interesting ones for you to have a look at which won't be very long, I'm sure. Please stay tuned for those. And in the meantime, thanks for all your time watching. I hope you enjoyed it, found it interesting. Look after yourself, stay safe. Uh, thanks a lot. And bye for now. Cheers.